Welcome to our Sports Briefing Show. Today, we're diving into some exciting news from the basketball world. First up, Golden State Warriors star Steph Curry and Sacramento Kings powerhouse DeMantis Sabonis have been voted to the All-NBA third team. This is Curry's 10th All-NBA team selection, setting a franchise record for the Warriors, while Sabonis secures his spot for the second consecutive season. Moving on, New York Knicks guard Jalen Brunson has made waves by leading the All-NBA second team. Brunson had a standout season with impressive stats and was also voted to his first All-Star game. Finally, Boston Celtics forward Jason Tatum continues to impress, being selected to the All-NBA first team for the third consecutive year, a feat not achieved by a Celtics player since Larry Bird. Please stay tuned for more details. Yahoo US reports that Warriors Steph Curry and Kings DeMantis Sabonis have been honored with selections to the All-NBA third team for the 2023-24 season. This marks Curry's 10th All-NBA team selection, a franchise record for the Warriors, highlighting his decade-long brilliance and dedication to the game. Warriors coach Steve Kerr praised Curry's relentless work ethic and his continued desire to improve. For Sabonis, this is his second consecutive All-NBA third team selection, making him the 10th player in Kings history to achieve back-to-back -back honors. The All-NBA teams this year were positionless, featuring top players like Giannis Antetokounmpo, Luka Doncic, and Nikola Jokic on the first team. Notably, some prominent players like Jalen Brown and Tyrese Maxey did not make the cut. Yahoo US also reports that Knicks guard Jalen Brunson was voted to the All-NBA second team for the 2023-24 season. Brunson received 37 first-place votes and 61 second-place votes, totaling 368 points, making him the top player on the second team. He had a stellar season, leading the Knicks to one of their best seasons in franchise history with career highs of 28.7 points per game and 6.7 assists. Brunson also made his first All-Star game appearance and finished fifth in MVP voting. The first team included players like Shai Gilgis Alexander and Nikola Jokic, showing the high level of competition Brunson faced. Yahoo US highlights that Boston Celtics forward Jason Tatum was selected to the All-NBA first team for the third consecutive year, making him the first Celtics player to achieve this since Larry Bird. Tatum had an impressive season, averaging 26.9 points, 8.1 rebounds, and a career-high 4.9 assists per game. His performance helped the Celtics secure the league's best record at 64-18. Although Jalen Brown missed the cut for the third team, his contributions were significant, averaging 23 points per game. The Celtics are now close to winning their first championship since 2008, having won game one of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Indiana Pacers. Yahoo US reports that 49ers running back coach Bobby Turner isn't overly concerned about Christian McCaffrey's absence from the team's OTA practice, attributing it to the business part of the NFL. McCaffrey, who signed a lucrative four-year, $64 million contract extension with the Carolina Panthers in 2020, remains one of the highest-paid running backs in the league. Despite his impressive contributions, McCaffrey's salary pales in comparison to some of his offensive counterparts, which might be a point of contention. With other key players like Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk set to earn significant salaries, the 49ers face a challenging financial balancing act. Turner emphasizes that McCaffrey is committed to improving daily and maintaining high standards, even as he plans to attend McCaffrey's upcoming wedding to fiancé Olivia Culpo. Yahoo US also highlights the reactions of 49ers stars Brock Purdy and Nick Boza to the potential expansion of the NFL season to 18 games. Purdy, the team's quarterback, expressed a preference for a second by week to help players manage the physical and mental toll of a longer season. He acknowledged the pros and cons of the proposal but remained undecided. In contrast, defensive end Nick Boza was more forthright in his opposition, questioning the necessity of adding another game. Boza, a four-time Pro Bowl player, believes the current 16-game format was sufficient and voiced concerns about the impact of additional games on players' well-being. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has suggested a revised schedule with two preseason games and 18 regular season games, sparking mixed reactions across the league. In a lighter note, Yahoo US reports that the Chicago White Sox have launched a ticket promotion to coincide with Bears quarterback Caleb Williams and his team's visit to Guaranteed Rate Field. The promotion offers $18 outfield tickets for the game against the Orioles, where Williams and several Bears rookies will throw out the first pitch. Williams, who was the number one pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, has already received enthusiastic receptions at Wrigley Field during Cubs games. The White Sox are eager to give their fans a chance to show their support for the Bears' new quarterback and his teammates, continuing the excitement surrounding Williams' arrival in Chicago.
Yahoo US also covers the story of Cubs pitcher Kyle Hendricks, who has been demoted to the bullpen following a difficult start to the season, marked by a 10.57 ERA and an 0-4 record over seven starts. Cubs manager Craig Council made the decision after Hendricks' inconsistent performances post-injury. Despite the setback, Hendricks remains optimistic, expressing his willingness to adapt and contribute to the team's success. He hopes the bullpen stint will help him simplify his approach and regain his form, as the Cubs continue to aim for victories in a competitive season. In another update from Yahoo US, Cubs pitcher Adbert Alzale has been shut down amid his injury rehab for a flexor strain in his pitching elbow. After seeking a second opinion in Texas, the prognosis remains uncertain, and further testing will determine if surgery is necessary. Alzale has struggled this season with a 4.67 ERA and multiple blown saves, adding to the Cubs' bullpen woes, which also include Julian Merriweather's long-term injury. Manager Craig Council indicated that Alzale's condition will be re-evaluated in two weeks, as the team navigates through a challenging period of injuries. The Toronto Star reports that U.S. Sailing has settled its federal lawsuit against Paul Kyard and the America One Racing Foundation, a case that had drawn significant criticism and distracted from the organization's goals. The lawsuit, which had been filed in January 2023, sought damages from America One Racing and its principals, including Kyard, who resigned as executive director of the U.S. Olympic sailing team earlier that year. The settlement, whose terms were not disclosed, includes a mutual non-disparagement agreement and no exchange of money. The controversy had prompted resignations and calls for leadership changes within U.S. sailing, as well as concerns from former medalists like Anna Tobias and J.J. Fetter. Tobias, who had rejoined the team in hopes of a resurgence under Kyard's leadership, expressed her frustration with the lawsuit, calling it a distraction from the team's goals and urging for a return to focus on achieving Olympic success. The South China Morning Post reveals that Atletico Madrid, featuring stars such as Antoine Griezmann and Memphis Depay, is rumored to visit Hong Kong for a friendly match in August. This would mark the first high-profile European team visit since Manchester City played Kitchi in 2019. The potential match is tentatively scheduled for August 7, though no official confirmation has been made. Kitchi, a local club involved in organizing the event, is cautious after the debacle with Lionel Messi's visit, where he did not play, leading to fan disappointment. The financial viability and community impact of hosting such a game are under scrutiny, with past experiences showing mixed results. Atletico Madrid sees Asia as a crucial market, having previously engaged with South Korea and sponsored by Chinese firm Wanda. The visit could be a significant boost for local football, offering exposure and experience against top-tier talent. Yahoo US covers Kamaru Usman's intriguing proposition for a boxing match between Alexander Yusik and Francis Ngannou. Yusik, who recently became the undisputed heavyweight champion by defeating Tyson Fury, is known for his technical prowess rather than raw power. Usman, speaking on his Four Pound Pound podcast, argues that a bout with Ngannou, known as the biggest puncher out there, would be a fascinating clash of styles. Despite Ngannou's recent knockout loss to Anthony Joshua, Usman believes that the match would showcase the importance of skill in boxing over mere punching power. However, with Fury planning to exercise a rematch clause against Yusik, the proposed fight between Yusik and Ganu remains highly speculative. Yahoo US, Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Bucker's controversial commencement address at Benedictine College has sparked a mix of reactions but hasn't affected his standing with his team. Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes, while disagreeing with some of Bucker's statements, vouched for his character, emphasizing the importance of respecting diverse viewpoints within a team. Bucker's speech covered several politically sensitive topics, including opposition to abortion and LGBTQ pride, which received mixed reactions from the college community. Chiefs head coach Andy Reid echoed Mahomes' sentiments, highlighting the team's diversity and the importance of respecting different opinions. Reid also noted that the controversy hadn't become a distraction for the team. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell similarly pointed to the diversity of opinions within the league, underscoring that this variety is part of what makes society better. The Toronto Star, Seattle Seahawks quarterback Geno Smith is adapting to a new offense under first-time NFL offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb. With 12 years of experience and numerous offensive coordinators under his belt, Smith finds learning a new offense less daunting but still challenging. Smith is in the early stages of understanding the Seahawks' new offensive system, which is being installed gradually. Head coach Mike McDonald mentioned that only about 20% of the defensive scheme has been implemented, with the goal of establishing a baseline for training camp. Smith feels confident in his grasp of the new offense, which he describes as a dropback system that suits his strengths as a passer.
Last season, Smith threw for 3,624 yards, 20 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions in 15 games. McDonald praised Smith's work ethic and leadership, expressing excitement about his potential growth. Associated Press, a bipartisan group of U.S. senators has sent a letter to the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, leader seeking answers about the case of 23 Chinese swimmers who were allowed to compete in the Tokyo Olympics despite positive tests for a banned drug. This action follows a similar request from the House to IOC President Thomas Bach and U.S. law enforcement officials. The senators criticized WADA's ethical behavior, citing a report that Chinese authorities cleared the swimmers due to accidental ingestion of the banned substance. The case has raised concerns about potential state-sponsored doping by China. Lawmakers also questioned whether China's additional financial contributions to WADA influenced the agency's decision. WADA has appointed a Swiss prosecutor to investigate, but critics demand a broader probe and full disclosure of the case file. The senators stress that trust and accountability are crucial for the global anti-doping system to function effectively. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.